Welcome in to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. You can also find us every day if you download Dash Radio on your phone and then go to the Nothing But Net channel. We're there every single day, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern, 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific. Also check out FiveReasonSports.com because when we do those Zoom calls with the Miami Heat players, my guy Brady Hawk texts me and says, I'll have something up in three minutes, and it's there. So if you want the breakdowns of everything that's going on with the Miami Heat as well as all of our columns, our podcast, Three Yards Per Carry on the Dolphins, is coming back this week. Five Rings Canes just did a long episode with Gino Toretta, some of the glory days also. So looking forward uh, with King and now at the quarterback for the Canes. So some good times there, provided that there will be football this fall. Also, check out our YouTube channel. We're going to be playing something in this episode from that YouTube channel, something I did on Bam Out of Bio today. But we're posting eight to ten videos a day on the YouTube channel. Also, check out all of our great sponsors, including the one that I can call our favorite sponsor because it's beer. It's Biscayne Bay Brewing Company. This is the official beer of not only the Five Reasons Sports Network, but also the Miami Marlins. And yeah, you know, they could use some beer right now, make them feel a little better about what's going on with them. And also Inter Miami. This is South Florida's actual independent brewery, Biscayne Bay Brewing. Biscayne Bay is owned by local guys who employ people in this community to make their beer right here in South Florida. These guys are committed to our community and support Five Reasons Sports so we can keep bringing you all the local sports content that you can handle. If you care about supporting local business and drinking amazing beer, grab their stuff, whether it's Marlins Lager, Miami Pale Ale, or Tropical Bay IPA. We might be doing a segment related to that soon. At all major retailers throughout South Florida. This is the beer that we're drinking at Five Reason Sports. It's Biscayne Bay Brewing. And now, today's episode. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a Miami Heat and NBA podcast from Ethan Skolnick with Alvon Sydney, aka Alf954. Brought to you by the Five Reason Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on five on the floor. Apologize, audio is a little different today. We will get that corrected later in the week. But my guys, Alex Toledo and Alphonse Sidney, will sound good as always. Here is today's floor plan. We're going to get early on to some of the comments from Eric Spolscher today as we set up what's going to happen in the third and final scrimmage on Tuesday. We're also going to talk about Bam Adebayo's comments, which were a little bit different than we were expecting. He decided to take a social justice route today instead of a basketball route. And so we're going to get into some of that. And then after we play something from the YouTube channel, we're going to get into a Twitter account. Um, (laughs) It's kind of a, I don't know, Raptors fan, Knicks fan. I don't know, but it started this whole debate about development and it, let's just be honest, pissed a lot of Heat fans off over the past 24 hours. So we're going to get into that towards the end. Um, Before we do, we're going to start here. Eric Spolstra, Alex and Alf, talked today about the plans for the scrimmage. He said he's going to spend the next three days getting a glass of wine with his staff, not every single day, and kind of figuring out what direction they're going to go. But he seems to have a plan. Bam Adebayo is going to play. He said that he was going to start. It sounds like everybody is available on the team except Perhaps KZ Akpala, who's been dealing with tendonitis. So for Heat fans have been asking, that's the reason that he hasn't been playing. He also said he's been trying to get the players out of the room, stop playing video games, Myers, um, and get out and get some vitamin D and play some golf. But other than that, he seems to love the environment in the bubble. He again thanked Adam Silver for providing it. We know what's happening with the other sports right now. And the Heat seem to be in a pretty good frame of mind as they go into the third scrimmage. What are we looking for in this game? Well, honestly, uh, it's good to see. I know Spo is always excited, and I'm pretty sure they're just kind of, you know, over this point. I'm pretty sure they're just ready to get to the beginning of the seeding games to then eventually get to the playoffs. We've already seen a lot of different lineups. The only ones that we haven't really seen are what we talked about last night, you know, some maybe some bigger lineups. But other than that, uh, I think we're going to see more of the same tomorrow. Yeah, I think you're what you're going to see tomorrow is going to be – hopefully more indicative of what the Heat are going to look like. You're probably going to get a sense of what the rotation is, which is really important. Um, I think right now we're all kind of – I think we're guessing, and I think we're guessing pretty closely, right? I think we we we, kind of, we, we know they're going to stick with that starting five. Um, at least we're, we're pretty positive just because of the way that starting five performed all season. 
And then after that, it's the, the, the bench rotation is really what's in question. Right now, you can't not play Kelly Olenek, right? <laughs> he's been so damn good since the All-Star break. Um, he's been really good in these scrimmages. Andre Godala looks like he's rounding into shape. Like, he looks really good. Um, his shooting hasn't been the greatest, um, but he's made some shots. And the way he sees the floor, uh, the way he runs that second unit a little bit with Dragic um, has been really, really fun to watch. And it's – they've – they've dominated other second units so far. And that's with some of their guys that they depend on in that second unit playing with the starters because of the BAM and the none situation with COVID. So yeah. that's what's really exciting to me, that we're actually going to see the the, the, the real rotation, at least probably through the first two quarters. Uh, you probably expect guys like Jimmy and BAM maybe not to even start the second half, or if they do play a lot of limited minutes. But – it's gonna be it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be interesting to see who comes off the bench first, um, who plays a lot of minutes off that bench. Do the Solomon Hill and Derek Jones Jr. How how soon do they come in? Um, Chris Silva does he play? Casey Akpala does he get a shot until the end of the fourth? So there's a lot of questions that will be answered, or you hope will be answered tomorrow, and it'll kind of give you an idea of what's going on in the into the uh, the seeding games. Am I crazy to think that? Um you know, that DJJ and Hill will be 11 and 12 in the scrimmage. Because cause I threw that out there on Twitter. I think it surprised people that I was moving DJJ from having been a fill-in starter to not being a part of the core five on the bench. But but I feel like if you just look at a lineup and the way that Eric's been going, that going with Olenek, Crowder, Iguodala, Hero, and Dragic is pretty much going to be the, star, the second five. I mean, I, who else are you taking out of there for DJJ? I know we've talked about this at length, but it – it's not going to be Jay Crowder, right? And so, and it's certainly not going to be Iggy. Now, I, th- th- there could be a situation, I think, where maybe he gets Iguodala a little more rest in game three. Uh, I think that's possible. You know, it, you know, maybe plays, you know, maybe a quarter or something like that. Because he's played a good deal of minutes the first couple of games. And obviously, mm-hmm. he's, 30, he's 36 years old. So maybe that's where DJJ's minutes come from. But I think otherwise, if you're looking at this as a, kind of a, a dress rehearsal, and he said Bam's not going to play heavy minutes, but he is going to play and he's going to start. If you're looking at this as a dress rehearsal, then I think DJJ's 11. I think Hill's 12, and maybe Chris Silva gets a few minutes after that. I think Gabe Vincent is simply mop-up time, and but we're probably not going to see Akpala. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, even though Solomon Hill has played well, right, it's – Derrick Jones Jr. is going to have to show something soon. Because we, we, we've all penciled him in in that second unit, and he's getting pushed out even further and further. Like, now we're talking, in, talking about him as the 11th guy, but Solomon Hill's played better than Derrick Jones Jr. had in the first two scrimmages. I don't think I'm alone on that. I don't know. I don't know. I would have said, but I you know, looking at Derrick Jones Jr., like, I, I was pretty happy with him. I mean, I think he just keeps – the more he plays, I feel like the sharper he gets – defensively and and generally with his basketball IQ. And I'm just more into his length and athleticism as a defender than I am in Solomon Hill, which I'm not a, I'm not a Solomon Hill hater. Like half of Heat Twitter is for some reason, just the oddest thing in the world. Why half of Heat Twitter just keeps trashing and Solomon Hill. Like, I think some of that's my fault. I think some of (laughs) it is because I I just think it's, I, I I just make, I, I make a lot of Solomon Hill jokes. But I, yeah, I half of he Twitter calling him homeless. It's like Jesus, man. Just well, I, honestly, and we can address it, man. I, he looks like Justice Winslow. Um, if Justice Winslow fell on some hard times, and I think that's why. I think that's where that comes from. Like him, and I'm allowed to say that. Um, you guys can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But he, like he, it, that, and it's just it, it makes for an easy joke. But I'm t- like defensively, like he's looked. Not he's not. I don't think he's as dynamic defensively as Derrick Jones Jr. is. He's burlier but, though. Burlier and put him on a bigger guy, maybe who's giving them problems. That's definitely, they're, like they're a, both going to be like matchup guys, right? Like, like you need an extra yes. defender. But I will say off, the, the issue, I guess. Offensively, he's looked better than Derrick has. Like his shot looks better. Um, he, it looks like uh, other teams respect his shot more than they do. Like when it comes to gravity and spacing, like he's going, I'm not saying that, you know, people are, you know, game planning for Solomon Hill three pointers. I'm just saying that they don't, they don't plant a center on him 
uh, and leave them in the paint to, to, to shut down penetration. Like, you have to respect them a little bit more than they're respecting D- DJJ right now. But, but I also think when you look at these scrimmages, right, there, there's really two purposes. There's guys you want to take a look at, and there's guys you try to get in shape because you're going to be leaning on them. And I, I don't know that they're going to be leaning on Solomon Hill. I think he has been effective in his minutes. Again, I think that the rap against him on Heat Twitter, and I was glad to see he went on Miami Heat beat and he got an audience there because I, I don't really know where the rap for him has come from. He's been a productive player. And I mean, he was look, he got a big contract that probably was more than he should have been paid. But other than that, he's been a productive NBA player. He's got a pretty good story. I, I just think that, you know, with Solomon Hill, it's about, okay, you get in shape so that he can play those minutes. I think with some of these other players, there are things that Eric wanted to see. He wants to see certain things from Tyler Hero. I think he wants to see that Kendrick Nunn is in the kind of shape that he can lean on him a little bit. You want to see Myers Leonard get his feet wet again after missing all that time. Um, and I think he wants to get Bam a few minutes with Jimmy just to sort of rebuild that chemistry, although you know they've had a couple of practices now to do it. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he'll get a lesser role in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if Iguodala gets a little bit more of a rest, uh, you know, so because you don't really need to push that. Now, Eric knows what he has in him. Um, I, I think this, this one to me is about getting a little bit of that, that chemistry in the starting lineup back. Um, you know, just so they have a look at each other again and how the ball moves and who needs to be in what spot on defense and how they communicate before the real thing starts. And, and I think it's that. And then it's also this bench unit coming off together. And, you know, after the break, we're going to talk about Bam's comments today. I want to get into Jay Crowder real quick. I mean, the one question I asked Jay is we talked a lot about his connection with Kelly Olenek, and he kind of got into specifics tonight about why. And, and he said part of it is they played together in Boston. But part of it, he said, is the versatility, the ability for Kelly to make plays for everybody else and to kind of fill a whole bunch of gaps for them offensively. And I feel like if you look at that group, Dragic, Hero, Crowder, Iguodala, Olenek, they kind of have everything covered, right? Like, I mean, they, they, they got some shooters. They have some ball handlers. You know, everybody kind of plays for each other. It's a really good group, potentially. Like, it, it might be the best bench in the whole bubble, honestly. And, and so I think that, that this is about getting those two groups together. I'm not saying DJJ doesn't have a role but he doesn't fit as naturally with that second group as Iguodala or Crowder do. Man, that is a good point, Ethan. Uh, I think the Heat have a top three bench right now in the bubble. I think it's the Clippers, the Raptors, and the Heat just off the top of my head. And mm-hmm. I think that's part of what Spo is kind of banking on here. If Lou Williams stays out of the strip clubs, uh, <laughs> they, they're definitely top two. Uh, but I, I agree with Alex. I, you, you have to look at the Clippers and Raptors and say, they might have, I mean, as good or better benches than the Heat. But I mean, to have a top three uh, bench and have one of the uh, most prolific starting units, I mean, you're giving yourself a good shot, you know? Yeah, I think when you break it down that way, like people who talk about the Heat being a dark horse, and I, I saw that ESPN had them sixth in their power rankings um, today. And yeah, we don't read too much in the power rankings, so but that's higher than I was expecting. Over the Celtics. Over the Celtics. But I, I think that when you start to think of it that way, and you're like, okay, they've got a starting lineup that was one of the five best starting lineups in the league from a net rating standpoint. And then they've got a bench that looks like it might overwhelm most of the teams that they're playing against, with the exception of maybe Toronto and if they saw the Clippers in the finals. I mean, their bench is better than the Laker bench. Their bench is better than Boston's bench. And Milwaukee's bench is pretty good, but it's not like a – it's more so – parts that they plug in with their starters it's not doesn't feel as much like a single unit but they've got some good players on it obviously some good vets um but i will say Ethan, just to be fair i read i read a few stories about them and there was a lot about how without Giannis, without middleton so basically they were really good yeah Yeah. they were really but i would agree with you that the bench is not as good i think as a standalone i would not take them over the heat bench and the numbers would but again we are we obviously know with the context we have not seen that you know any type of sample from that heat bench because as we, we haven't know, seen this when these guys at all. this is the exactly new right 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 exactly because when when this trade happened we we know what happened with uh hero and myers so we never really saw the team healthy there jimmy missed a lot of time out here mm-hmm. jimmy missed time you, you were missing you you spent a lot of time without 60 percent of your starting lineup right um and there was right. a lot there was a lot of djj in the starting lineup i mean it, it was this is not the team this team that we're looking at, this especially that second unit, we've never seen them play together like this as a second no, unit. So, no, but, but I, think, I think that's 
Well, I think that's why Spolster wants to – I think that's why he'll roll out in the scrimmage that way. I think he wants to look at it. I don't think you're at the point where you have to keep it a secret. I think other teams kind of know. I mean, one of the questions I asked Eric today was, is he, is he watching a bunch of other games? And he said, this is like summer camp for us. We got the, we got the TV on the whole time. They got nothing else to do. That, yeah, they're, no, they wouldn't be watching other games. They're watching all of them. Not from a scouting perspective, but they're just watching ball, basically. Can I, can um, I just say how the bubble looks amazing? Like, it looks like the most fun it does. in the world. Like, well, it looks more fun than what the Marlins are going through right or now. Or than what we're going through in our regular lives right now. Like, <laughs> I mean, they're fishing. They're hanging out. They're actually able to shake hands and, like, <laughs> like speak to people within, within just, six It feet. really is just a, a dull summer camp, right? Like, it's Shangri-La, yes. bro. Like, if they just – if, if they had made a Disney strip club, they would have been fine. Right, yeah. Well, that the only touch missing. At Disney. Can that wasn't going to happen at Disney. That's right. As long as they brought the, the Magic City wings. The only right, thing – Daisy, yeah. Daisy Duck is thick. I, don't, I just want to just put. I don't know out what <laughs> Alf is talking about right now. We've got off the rails completely. That's why I'm trying to get to break because I, I know was where gonna, this is going. I, I, I was doing this on say, purpose at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that these games are really nice. It, it, it really nice presentation, but there is a very much a Black Mirror element to it. And uh, Alfonso Hoos first said this, but ever since he said that, I can't stop seeing it. Like especially with the fans and the you know the whole like virtual fake presentation element, I can't stop thinking, oh my God, this is just NBA Black Mirror. <laughs> it's it's better than real life right now. So, All right, we're going to get to something more important here after the break, but first a word from one of our sponsors. I want to introduce you to another of the great new sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and it is a sponsor that would be important in any time if you want to have a beautiful workspace, but it's especially important now when you need a safe one as well. And that's safecubbies.com, which offers modular office solutions designed to elevate your open office into a modern and safe environment at any budget. You can personalize your workspace with options like whiteboards, magnetic panels, acrylic sheets, and graphic branding. Most of the surfaces are non-porous for easy cleaning and can be removed or replaced within minutes. Now, this is for workplaces. They've got a bunch of different options on their professional series, but also they've got private room solutions, dividers and sneeze guards, and they have a classroom series as well. So if you're involved with the school, this is definitely something your school should check out, of course, if we have school in the fall. And that's the point here. We were entering a new normal period with COVID-19. SafeCubbies.com, which is locally owned, is the place that you want to go. The phone number is 754-216-1071. Again, that's 754 754- 416-1071 or safecubbies.com. All right, back here on five on the floor. Again, check out safecubbies.com. We're going to talk about Bam Adebayo's call uh, from Monday night. But before we do, the big topic on Twitter today was something that happened on the NBA Central account. And I went on the YouTube channel today to speak on it. No further introduction needed. Let's get to it. Ethan Skolnick for Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Make sure to check out fivereasonsports.com. This is the latest season ticket on YouTube. I was not planning on talking to you about the Heat, at least until we do our podcast tonight, but Heat fans are freaked out. I know it doesn't take a lot for good or for bad for Heat fans to freak out, but I thought I would address this. There was a tweet that came out from, I think, believe it's a Twitter uh, handle called NBA Central. They put out a bunch of stuff, rumors, things that are said, all that kind of stuff. And basically all they did was transcribe what Brian Windhorst said over the last 24 hours on ESPN, which is that the Miami Heat were planning on waiting until 2021 to offer Bam Adebayo the extension that he wants because they want to have as much money as possible for free agents. A couple things I want to address. First thing, Brian's a friend. He's a really good reporter. I'm not going to trash him, okay? So I know Heat fans might want me to do that. That's not happening. Uh, But number two, I I just think this is a Um, non-issue. First thing, okay, If you're concerned that the Heat don't understand how important BAM is, you're wrong, all right? This is an organization that has put him at the forefront of everything. They understand not only how important he is on the court with the growth that's going to come as he gets deeper into his 20s and the growth that's already come, but they also understand how important he is as a recruiter around the league. Other players love BAM, okay? It started inside the organization, and some of the old heads, guys like Udonis Haslam, Chris Bosh, Alonzo Mourning, kind of a holy triumvirate of, of Heat big guys, 
who anointed Bam next in the organization. That's when you still had Justice Winslow there. That's when you're bringing in Jimmy Butler. They anointed Bam Adebayo. Okay, the other thing is Jimmy Butler loves Bam Adebayo. He's told people around him that he's the best teammate he's ever had. Think about that. The best teammate he's ever had. He hasn't been playing with them that long. All right? And, and again, other players around the league love Bam. So he is a draw in the same way that Dwayne Wade was. All right, let's get to Wade. The Heat made mistakes with Wade. I've talked to so many people over the course of the past four years. They understand their mistakes they made with Wade. They're not going to make the same mistake again. If Bam wants the extension early, they'll give him the extension early. But I don't think it's going to be necessary. And and I understand Bam has concerns about injury. But remember who he shares an agent with, right? There's only one other guy in the league that shares the same agent, prominent guy, Giannis, right? You don't think the Heat are going to clue Bam in to what their plans are in 2021? This isn't a situation where Dwayne was upset that the Heat went after Hassan Whiteside, who was kind of a nincompoop and was represented by somebody totally different. This is the best player in the league, arguably, certainly top three, probably going to win the MVP again, who's represented by the same guy. And not only is he represented by the same guy, Bam is the only player in the league that Giannis seems to want to work out with who's not a Milwaukee Buck. I mean, Bam, I mean, Giannis has rejected everybody since Kobe Bryant in terms of working out in the offseason. He doesn't believe in it, which is something that Pat Riley loves, by the way, the Giannis' attitude. But he wants to work out with Bam. So they're going to plug Bam in on every step of this process. If they have to give him an extension early, I believe they will do it. But I don't think they're going to have to. I think they will explain where they're going. Do you want to be part of a championship team? Bam has shown nothing other than that he wants to win since he's here. He doesn't care about his numbers, even though his numbers have become otherworldly, particularly when you start throwing in the assists and everything else that he's doing. So all I would tell Heat fans is relax, relax. It's going to be fine. You're in good hands, okay? This is an organization that gave out four-year deals to James Johnson, and Dion Waiters because they were trying to prove that they take care of their players after what happened with Dwayne. You think they're going to let this player go? Not happening. Ethan Skolnick for Five on the Floor, Five Reasons Sports. All right, back here on Five on the Floor. We're going to talk about Bam's call now, um, but just general thoughts on the extension and the Windhorse comments. Did Heat Twitter overreact, Alf? Did Heat Twitter overreact? <laughs> Does Heat Twitter exist? I mean, yeah, of course it overreacted. It was so ridiculous. Like, not everybody understands cat machinations. I don't. Like, it has to be explained to me, like, every three minutes by Brian Goins from Heat Beat. I have no idea what's going on half the time. Leif has to explain this stuff to me. But I guess, you know, if you're just reading the comment, oh, the Heat might not extend BAM to protect 2021 free agency, you're like, oh, the Heat are making a mistake. Instead of thinking, oh, look, the Heat and Bam might be working together on this. And I think that's what you're saying. I think that's what most of the people in the know are saying. But I think, you know, Leif made the point. I've made the point. Uh, Chef Trilly, who we always talk about on the show because we like him, he made the point that if Bam wants an extension, you just give him the damn extension, right? (laughs) You do not piss Bam off for the hope of 2021. But what you're hoping for, like, and what we've talked about is that BAM is working with them. And you would have to think with everything going on, with the amount of recruiting that we've seen, uh, high key and low key from these guys, <laughs> that BAM is 100% on board with bringing in another big name in 2021, if at all possible. And, at the, and also at the same time, Remember who we're talking about here. Even if they do extend extend Bam this summer, there are obstacles, but there are none. Like the the man said it last year, and we we forget already. They signed Jimmy Butler with no cap space. Like this, Andy Ellisberg is a genius. Like if if they extend Bam this summer, they are going to find some kind of way. Like they're gonna turn uh, Ryan, whatever his name was, into like some. A trade exemption and I don't know what the hell they're gonna figure it out like Andy is smarter than me so Ryan like, Anderson yeah right. yes, Ryan Anderson. <laughs> I, was I don't think figure. they could actually turn Ryan Anderson into I, I'm telling but, you but Andy, right, can, do it. Can, Andy can do it he's gonna do it I was gonna say <laughs> Ryan Leaf for some reason I don't know it's been a long day I'm on my second cup of crown but anyway well at least we're not talking about Daisy Duke all right I, I've had enough of you Alex Daisy go ahead Duck. what do you think Daisy Duck Daisy look Duke, it up Daisy Duck. yeah I, okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> go ahead Alex any thoughts to add to that? 
I'm sorry. I'm just completely. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so adamant about that take. <laughs> About Daisy um, Duck? Okay. Well, look it up. <laughs> I literally forgot. <laughs> All right, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the topics then. All right, so image. let's uh, forget it. You're passed over. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> I agree that they definitely got to get Bandy extension if he, if he really wants it right now. I wouldn't be surprised, like I've said, if the team is working together uh, because it just doesn't make sense that, you know, Bam will be recruiting – while also knowing that if they were to kind of sign him early, he could get in the way of that, unless they've also told them, yeah, there are no obstacles. Maybe we can, you know, we can get you that extension, but we're going we're gonna to have to make sacrifices elsewhere with some of the things we're going to have to do to make it work, uh, to improve the, the core. But either way, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be too worried about it. There's no way the Heat are even thinking about pissing him off. Like, there's just no way. He is the future of the team. He is the president of the team. The guy took a jump from, backup center to starting center to, uh, you know, 50-50 uh, centerpiece with Jimmy Butler and to now, what, a top 40, top 30 player in the league, more or less? Like, the Heat are not going to want to piss him off in any fashion. There's no way that he's going to end up on another team. There's just no All way. Right, let's, get, let, let, let's get to what he talked about tonight now. Um, because I thought when he came on, you know, the Heat, uh, just for some context, the Heat make two players available. The NBA mandates at this stage uh, two players available plus the coach, and that's pretty much that. Not pretty much. That is what we've been getting, unless the Heat have an off day. And so they rotate the players. They've gotten Jimmy a couple times, gotten Tyler Hero a couple times, got Kendrick Nunn the other day. Uh, and tonight was kind of Bam's turn to speak. And so Bam and Jay Crowder were the two players. And when Bam came on. He said that this interview was going to be about something, and I thought he was going to say that he wanted to correct anything that was out there about his extension. I thought that's where it was going. And you got to understand the way these calls work. We queue up. Alex and I have both been on the calls. We've kind of rotated. Sometimes we've been on together. And you have to raise your hand on the Zoom call when you want to speak. We should do this here on the podcast. You have to raise your hand when you want to speak. It might be. And... But the thing is, when you raise your hand, it's one of those things. By the time that someone gets to you, either sometimes your question has been asked because it's, it's, this isn't like you're in front of the player and there's dialogue going on because everybody else is muted when you're asking the question. Um, and sometimes the, the conversation takes a totally different turn. <laughs> and tonight, Bam came on and he said, it wasn't that he wanted to, to speak about the extension. He said, I will only be speaking to Daniel Cameron. For people who are not familiar with Daniel Ca- Cameron, um, this is the case in Kentucky uh, with Brianna, the, uh, the, the, the death. And again, we can characterize it, you know, you know, we can certainly have a discussion about this on another podcast of uh, Brianna Taylor. And Bam has been outspoken about this, about how there's been no action taken against those officers. And Bam tonight um, took four questions, one of which was for me, because I wasn't going to ask him a basketball question after he said, I had a basketball question queued up, but I wasn't going to ask it. He said it was going to only be about Brianna Taylor and Daniel Cameron. So I asked something related to his platform. He took four questions related to that case, four answers, finished it with Black Lives Matter, and left. Alf, you had some thoughts on this. And then I I have some thoughts, too, not from what Bam did, but how I think the teams may decide to handle some of this going forward. Well, I mean, isn't this what we were talking about so much? Like the going into the bubble, carrying on with this NBA season – it was going to give guys a platform and to talk about things that were bigger than basketball. Um, if every, if every time they talk on zoom or they talk to reporters, everything's about pick and roll coverage or, you know, how are you feeling recovering from COVID? Like it's, it's, we're missing the point again. Right. And I, and I'm guilty of this too. I found so much enjoyment over the weekend and just the, the other scrimmages and like watching WNBA. And even though they're talking about Breonna Taylor and, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're doing protests during the national anthem or before the national anthem, like I'm starting to get, you know, absolved into the sporting aspect of it. So it's going to take every once in a while, a guy telling you, I'm not talking about basketball today. Ask me about Breonna Taylor. Or don't ask me anything else. And I applaud him for that. Because we have to, um, as a society, just keep the focus on what's really important here. Basketball is not important. Basketball is fun. I think basketball 
is necessary. Uh, sports are necessary right now. Necessary is, uh, is a strong word, but sports are needed right now because the, the mental health of this country is in a bad place. And I, and I, I, I can just, I can feel the relief on my timeline or when I talk to my friends in real life and just, just overall, just people just happy to see sports back, but we can't be so happy to see sports back that we forget what's really going on right now, that there's still cities burning. There are still people protesting. Uh, the people, the, the, the men who murdered Breonna Taylor are still not in jail. So there's, 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 there's things that we just can't forget right now. And, Bam, doing that today puts it back in the forefront. We're thinking about it again. We're talking about it again. So it's important and it's necessary. And I, there's a lot. I, I, and I saw all the shut up and dribble stuff uh, in response to, to, to Barry's tweet on Twitter today. There was some these people are just complaining. They don't want to hear about who to vote for from an NBA player, blah, blah, blah. Like pretty much, hey, black guy, shut up. We just want to see you play basketball. And that's why it's important that BAM does this because, you know, the, the, the closed minded are back out, you know, they're, 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 they've come out from hiding and they just want their sports back, but no, it's not going to be just about sports. It's going to be about something more than that. I think all of that um, is worth saying here because, uh, because I noticed a lot of those comments on Barry's post too. I will say, I thought it was interesting that, when I posted Bam's tweets, I was expecting a lot of that because I was doing it, you know, as we went. Um, you know, I think I posted like seven or eight of his comments and I didn't get any of those. I don't know if that's the audience on our Twitter account, which is very NBA heavy. You've blocked um, them. It, I mean, may, may, maybe I have. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, Barry, Barry's audience, just like my audience on my personal Twitter account is a little bit more open than just NBA. Um, whereas I feel like five reason sports tends to skew. If I, we have 18,000 something followers on there, I feel like 16,000 of them are there for NBA. So maybe the NBA fan is going to understand this. I, I will say this. It, I'm totally in agreement with him doing it. Okay. We've talked about this. If, yeah, that's one of the things I said, if you went to the bubble, you were going to have an opportunity to speak um, in a way that I thought that if you were not there, those opportunities might not be as plentiful. And so I'm all in favor of Bam exercising his platform. Uh, he talked about how he's beginning to realize he has a platform. I just want to present this from a team perspective, okay, because of the way that they're doing this. If they're having two players on there every day, okay, and one of them is – Bam is one of your two best players, right? So it's Bam and Jimmy. Jimmy has spoken on social justice issues – but he's also spoken on basketball, okay? Do you think that the teams, I'm not just saying the Heat, but that if the teams are limiting it to a couple of guys that are going to speak every day, the teams are going to keep putting out players who will not speak about basketball. Do you think there's going to be any pushback from organizations? Because I, I know NBA media, and some of them are going to get a little crotchety about this. I'm not saying the team should listen to it, but I know NBA media. How, how do you think that they strike – that balance or is it just we're going to put the guy up there whatever he wants to talk about he talks about or doesn't want to talk about he doesn't have to talk about it's pretty much going to be here right like do you i don't know how much i mean unless they really just get tired of like reporters complaining but i i just don't see how they should budge on it like i i'm absolutely without i'm all the way with bam and respect what he's doing and it's it's his choice it's i i think this is one of those things that players are doing where it's like yeah, we're gonna play basketball. We're gonna hear. We're gonna do what you guys want. We're gonna we're gonna entertain you. Everybody wants the playoffs, including us. But there's gonna be some times in between where we're just gonna talk about the things that are more important because we don't want it to be a distraction. You know, like I said. Oh, I thought Alpha was gonna jump in there. All right, this is another cut. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we can cut that. But yeah, that's the thing. Uh, it's. It's going to be so easy to get lost, right? It's going to be so easy to get lost in talking about uh, second units and talking about rotations and all this stuff and really lose the, you know, really lose the message and really lose the point. Because um, I already feel like I watch the news right now and, it, you know, it's we're done. You know, we're done with Black Lives Matter. We're on to COVID. We're on to the 2020 election. And all these things are intertwined in a way, but like, 
we it feels like the the nation's already starting to move on from this stuff. And if guys like Bam and if guys who are at the forefront, if LeBron and uh, the 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 women in the N- WNBA, if they're not if they're not uh, keeping the focus on it, I don't know how many other prominent voices are going to continue to do it. Um, and it's 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 putting a lot on their shoulders. I know, um, but it's kind of what they it's kind of what they preached when they talked about coming back and 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 playing the season out. Part of the thing that part of what they promised us was that they were going to keep the focus on the murder of George Floyd, on the murder of Breonna Taylor, on, you know, police reform, defunding the police, all these, all these social, all these social justice issues that uh, were so important coming into the season where there were some of us, people like me that were just questioning, questioning if the season was even worth playing. And if, you know, if they're going to go out there and play that season, they got to keep their promise to us. People like me and people, um, you know, black men, black women, brown men, brown women, uh, you know, people everywhere that are really, really focused on this and really affected by it. They have to keep their promise. And today it felt like Bam was keeping his promise. Yeah. And I think that's, like I said, the thing to monitor now um, is whether the teams will continue to allow them to keep that promise. I believe the Miami Heat will because we've seen the way that they've rallied behind their players. Um, everybody in the organization, pretty much everybody prominent, has been out there on their videos. We saw, I thought, Eric Reed's very moving uh, presentation at, you know, the, during the telecast the other day about his family and why Black Lives Matter to him. I mean, the team has handled this in an exemplary fashion. I don't think that the Heat will, the Heat, and I, you know, the, the Heat media relations has been there for 25 years. It's, it's basically the two people at the top have been there that whole time uh, for the most part. Uh, certainly uh, Tim Donovan has. I don't think that they'll restrict the players in any way. I do think you're going to see some other teams kind of shade away from it if they can. Uh, and, and I think in certain markets, <laughs> uh, and we know what those markets are, I think they're going to be more inclined to do that. I don't think it's going to happen in Miami, but it struck me tonight um, because, you know, I, I just, I'm just thinking about it as, as, you know, some of these teams go a little bit further. If the players, you know, are going to stay laser focused, you know, on social justice and not talk basketball, there's going to be complaints from a certain segment. And I'm just curious to see how, how the league uh, deals with that. All right, we're going to get well, the market. The Miami market definitely has some of that segment that you're referring to. So, well, they do. They, no, they definitely do, but it's less in the heat market, as we've talked about many times. I, it, it's more, you know, it's more so kind of following the other sports <laughs> Wait, than so it is following are you, the heat. Are you saying Barry got it from Hurricanes fans? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you fill that in. All right, I want to tell you about another great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and that's Louis Peters at State Farm. This is an agency representing the number one auto and home insurer in the United States. More than 60 years of combined experience in the insurance industry. These are local agents that understand South Florida's unique market. Access 24-7, calling in or clicking in. Again, the address on the internet is louispeters.com. That's L-U-I-S, peters.com. You can also find him on Twitter at SF Agent Peters. Again, no cookie cutter solutions. This is personalized service tailored to each individual customer. He's based right here in Miami off 117th Avenue. Again, louispeters.com. He's also a big Miami sports fan, so you certainly can argue with him about that. All right, we're going to spend more time on this tonight, but this episode, and I apologize for some of the, the technical issues tonight. That's, uh, that's my computer. That's my issue, and that's going to get fixed. Uh, but we were going to spend more time mocking somebody tonight. We'll save this for the end now. Um, how do we even start this? It's, it's a, this guy's not a Raptors fan, right? He's a Knicks fan. Is that correct? I think so, it but he looks like he's like a maple leaf. I don't know what he is. All right. Well, the Twitter account, the Twitter account, it is a maple leaf. The Twitter account, it's got, I feel like we've doubled his followers in the past, like, couple of days, is at NBA Draft Addict, okay? I don't even know. Should I even be promoting this? I, I feel, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, let's, let's direct everybody to point and laugh. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Okay. So anyway, this account came out. I was, I was running to the gym the other day. I'm just minding my own business, looking on Twitter, and he puts up this post about the five best developmental organizations in the NBA. And he doesn't have the heat on there. <laughs> he has the heat, excuse me, 
as honorable mention, um, he has the Raptors. They belong there. He has San Antonio. What did he have? San Antonio first. Is that right? And then he had Golden State third yeah. after Toronto. And, and, and so this all sort of started, I think I contributed to this because I drew attention to the guy right away because Golden State hasn't developed a damn thing. <laughs> I mean, other than their core, core top guys, which is a few years ago now, they didn't find a rotation player uh, to supplement that group of any note that they wanted to keep. I mean, Eric Paschal this year, but I mean, previous to that, they didn't find anybody. San Antonio hasn't been a real good developmental organization in the past couple of years. He didn't have the Heat in the top five. And, of course, Heat Twitter responded, you know, as Heat Twitter responds, you know, very mellow about this. Now, they, they basically torched the guy's account. Um, I, I mean, any thoughts on how he had the rankings? And I want to actually try to lead this to a substantive discussion. Well, I mean, the, the Knicks being up there is ridiculous. I mean, did he have the Knicks in the top five? No, I don't no, think he, he had the have... Knicks in the top five. I, oh, wait, a... I that's what you said. Well, no, no, he's a Knicks fan. And then he, he uh, I think he said that he'd rather have R.J. Barrett and, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's and Mitchell was. Robinson than Bam and Tyler Hero, which is, which is I mean, either either this, this guy has um, issues or he was just trolling. Because there's absolutely no way anybody's taking Mitchell Robinson and R.J. Barrett over uh, Bam and Tyler Hero. But um, now when it just when it comes to development, I think it's, people are so stuck in the big three years with when it comes to Miami. It's either people forget entirely about the dominance of that era, or they know. can't get out of that era. It's one or the other. You know, it's 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 like they discount anything that's happened after 2014, but also don't give them any credit for anything that happened before 2014. So, so it's like just move the goalposts no matter what you're, what, whatever topic you're talking about. Um, so, you know, they don't, they don't consider the fact that Tyler Hero got a – Tyler Johnson, I'm sorry, got a max contract. They don't consider the fact that guys like Rodney Magruder, you know, were sought after. Uh, you know, like these guys that they picked up – I don't want mean to stay off the trash heap, but guys that, you know, journeymen or guys that undrafted, guys nobody else was looking at. Duncan Robinson, the most improved player – uh, candidate starting for a top four team in the East, Kendrick Nunn, a guy they picked up on the last day of the season, undrafted, starting for a top four team in the East, Derek Jones Jr., who was basically cast aside by the Phoenix Suns, who we're talking about just a few months ago, was was a major key uh, player in the Heat rotation. So I just feel like the Heat aren't getting the the credit that's due to them, e- even though it's funny. Like when you when you when you listen to the experts, they give the Heat credit. It's just these randos on on Twitter and like these, it, you know, you want to call them casuals, whatever you want to. They just can't get past, uh, like I said, they can't get past the big three and they can't get past the Heat missing the playoffs for a couple of years. I mean, there's too well, many I, names. It, it, no, there's too many names, but, but I think part of it is when you look at it, okay, I, I'm with you that they get stuck in the big three. I, you can certainly make a case that the Heat were not a great developmental organization during the big three era. And we've had that conversation Organization well, pushes – well, the organization like pushes – Right, but the, the organization pushes back on me a little bit because they'll talk about, you know, Norris Cole, who they developed into a rotation player, a core piece uh, for that team, and then there were a couple others. But for the most part – and there were very good reasons for this. They were focused on veterans, okay, and sort of reclamation projects that they could put around LeBron James to maximize the window with him. I, I, I totally get that. But they did put it aside. But since 2014 – you can't kind of have it both ways. So this guy was basically saying that the Heat haven't accomplished anything since LeBron left, right? But the one thing that the Heat have accomplished, he wasn't giving them credit for, is they've developed a hell of a lot of players over the past few years. And you mentioned them, and you didn't even mention Whiteside, Alf, who I, I think that, you know, we, we sort of, you know, we say, okay, Hassan turned out to be a bad decision when them giving him the contract. But, I mean, Hassan was nothing when they got him. I mean, they developed him to a max guy. Like, and not just a max guy that they wanted, but a max guy that five other teams were lined up to sign as soon as it hit 1201. Uh, okay, so it, to me, if you're looking at we'll, we'll, you know, we'll devote more time to this on a longer episode when we're not doing it at the back end. But if you're looking at developmental organizations for the past five years, and particularly even the smaller sample size of three years, it's Miami and Toronto. I don't care if it's 1-2 two or 2-1. Two, 
there's nobody else close. I mean, I think Denver's done a good job, and I think he, they, had him, they had them on the list. I think Utah's done a pretty good job. There are some. But you can't have Golden State there. You can't have San, you can't have San Antonio there. Who has San Antonio developed to any great effect? DeJounte Murray? Yeah, I was about to say I mean, Murray. Was, but he was a high pick, though. Yeah, like, I mean, who? I mean, who, who have they developed? I mean, Kyle Anderson, who then ended up going to Memphis? Like, who I mean, on San Antonio? The only person I could think of other than DeJounte Murray is the other guy that they've developed, uh, Derek White, who is kind of a low-profile guy, and he's now mm-hmm. like a starting caliber. You know, he's a two-way player. Uh, but other than that, I'm not really sure. I mean, who are you going to give him? You can give him credit for Kawhi, obviously. That's a thousand percent. You you got to give him credit. But for we're Kawhi. going. But we're going. We're going back ten years at this point, though. I, I get it. Well, but I don't like, even. I, what, what's the span that we're even talking about here? Because if if we're mentioning Heat players from back then, I thought. Well, I, if, if we're talking about like last twenty years, then yeah, I would I would understand putting uh, the Spurs there. Other than that, not not in the recent years though. But if you're going to expand to twenty years, then there's a whole bunch of other Heat guys you got to include. Then you got to look at the. You know, the Anthony Carters and uh, the Bruce Bowens and the Ike Austins and, mm-hmm. and that whole group. I mean, now you know, Ike Austin, we're going back maybe a little further than 20 years. But, but you know what I'm past talking five about. five years, the heater the is past five, five still. Absolutely. Past five years, okay, past five years, Tyler Johnson, Rodney Magruder, Hassan Whiteside, uh, I mean, obviously now Duncan uh, Nunn, Okay, I mean, but I mean, they've and not Don't just forget, that. Josh Richardson turning him from a no name fortieth, fortieth, fortieth pick to a guy that was the primary piece being flipped for Jimmy Butler. I mean, at, and and they've done this without. I mean, h- their highest pick during this period of time has been number ten, right? Justice Winslow. Yeah. So the the only organization that compares is Toronto. It's the only one. Van Vliet, Siakam, Boucher looks like a player now, oh. or at least a rotation player. Right, Powell. Like that's the there what Masai has done up there and has been they're the only organization and when, when Davis balling too they, yeah I mean they just punch is like a bunch of guys that they got out of nowhere right and they're all they're, all of them are long uh, so some of them can shoot a little bit but they just they fit the, the part so I don't want to focus too much on this one Twitter account except to say that this guy is a moron. Um, there's no way that the Knicks there, there might be some teams that like R.J. Barrett still over Tyler Hero. And we've, we've talked about that, too, that if they were in different situations, you may feel differently about the two of them, but they're not. There isn't anybody who would take Mitchell Robinson over Bam out of Bayern. Oh, okay? man. <laughs> I like okay. Mitchell Robinson, man, but come on. Like, Bam is just I mean, Knicks fans ahead, are delusional, man. so. Yes. I mean, honestly, can we blame them? Like, imagine having to, like, go through this for the past however many years. Like, can we blame them? Let's just let them be delusional and then just kind of, like, not interact. It's like, yeah, it's fine. Like, let them have something. It's, the times are tough right now, man. Well, the one topic we didn't get into today, there's two topics we didn't get into, so we'll save them for uh, for future episodes. One was Dion Waiters had 18, again, for the Lakers, and I do want to have a Dion conversation at some point. And the other is Tom Thibodeau in New York. So uh, that was on my list. We didn't get to it. Uh, check out our sponsors. Obviously, safecubbies.com is another one, but Biscayne Bay Brewing, louispeters.com, uh, Seltzer Mayberg Law Firm at One Call Legal. Dot com. We appreciate everybody getting involved with us. Check out our YouTube channel. Check out 5 com. I will get my computer fixed. It will sound better tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network.